Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We just bless your name. We praise you. We honor you, God. We just magnify you on today, Lord God. You are such a good God. You're such a great God. And we just bless you on today, Lord God. We just come before you now, Father God, asking you, Lord God, to have your way in this service on today. Lord God, just have your way. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, God, and we honor you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, welcome, welcome to Bethel Worship Center International. We are live on Facebook, on YouTube. Welcome to all of those on Zoom, on any social media platform. We are so excited for you to be with us today. So I am going to go without further ado, and I'm going to turn it over to Miss Sabrina for our announcements. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for that. Yes, we are live and I love it. And so I'd like to start the announcements with welcoming all that we have here today. We'd like to welcome our visitors and guests. We'd also like to welcome our family that's here with us each and every Sunday. And so if this is your first time uh, with us or first time in a long time, remember that you are family now. So we'd like to thank you for joining us. We'll have more ways that you can contact us if you have any questions. So we'll go right into it to our tithe and offering. So we still have the ability for you to give. It is the 1st of November, uh, as mentioned earlier. So it's definitely the giving season for sure. And so we have the ways that you can continue to give and provide your tithes and offering. And so you can do it electronically. You can come into the church. Uh, there's a multitude of ways that are shared here on the slide. And so if you have any questions, just contact us. But all that information is there for you. You can always reference them back to our website. And also don't forget about Amazon Smile. I know every time that I purchase it pops up. So as you're beginning to make your purchases for the holidays, uh, you uh, please choose Bethel Worship Center as your charity of choice. And so a proceed of that comes to the church directly, no additional action required by you. On Mondays, we are still having our children's church. That is every Monday at 7.30 p.m. The children are having a wonderful time learning and, and doing what they call the sword drills, trying to find the scripture, who can get it first, all in fun. So please, please, please have your children join. And while they're in school, they can reach out and say, join, um, uh, invite their friends to join as well. And that is Mondays at 7.30 we also have our noonday prayer. That's Monday through Friday at noon. Please join us on the line as we continue to go forth before the Lord and pray against COVID-19 and all the different additional things that are going on um, in the world today. And so we need as many people to come together collectively. So please, please, please join us. If you have any questions or concerns or want to pray or lift up any prayer requests or praise report, you can reach out to us directly and we'll get that information over to the majors. We also have Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have our food pantry. We are out there rain or shine. And so that's Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, we are passing out uh, lunches and breakfast for children. We also have bags of perishable and non-perishable items, fresh fruits and vegetables. We um, also have milk. Uh, so please, please, please come out. And we have that there. We do have opportunities for volunteering if that's something that you would want to do. Uh, we have uh, opportunities to volunteer right from your home. Uh, there are ways that you can help without even coming out. So please reach out to us as well. And as I stated, it is November. And so it's time to uh, begin to prepare for Thanksgiving. So help out the worship center with our Thanksgiving food drive. Uh, we are starting it today through the 15th. We want to collect enough dinners for 50 families. Yes, I said it, 50 families. And so we need your help. Uh, you, we need turkeys, dressing, cranberry sauce, rice, canned vegetables, bread, desserts, gravy, drinks. And just remember that the average family size is four to six. So we need that turkey not to be the size of a hen, but enough to feed four to six family members. And so please, please, please contact us if you have any questions. Uh, we are accepting monetary donations through the ways that you can give um, with uh, Cash App, Venmo, mailing it, calling us, whatever it is. Uh, we are accepting that. Uh, we do have contact list drop off. So if you want to drop it off, uh, we, do, we can um, provide that service for you. Uh, just give us a call and we can make sure that someone's there. It's not sitting out on the church porch for a long period of time. 
uh, but we do need your help uh, to make this happen. Also on top of that, if you or you know someone that is in need, please make sure that you send the name phone number and email address over to us no later than the 15th at 1159. We want to make sure that we get all the names in and we get all the things prepared because we want to deliver, excuse me, not deliver. We want to make sure that these are ready for distribution on November the 24th. So keep that in mind. If you have any questions, again, please contact us. We also have our Wednesdays Daniel fast. And so that's every Wednesday from six to six. Uh, we have some additional fasting that's going on from uh, being introduced on the prayer line. So that information is available as well. But just always remember our Wednesday Daniel fast, six to six fruits and vegetables. And we continuously lift up those that are impacted by COVID-19 in any way, shape or form. Uh, we also are definitely praying towards this Tuesday's uh, election. That's going part with the prayer that we have from the um, noonday call. And then also God's peace over the land. There is a lot of disruption, but we know God is greater than it all. And so we wanna continue to pray God's peace over the land and in the hearts of many. We also have our Thursday corporate prayer. Please join us as we pray over our nation. We would have already uh, possibly had uh, the results from the election. And so it's definitely a time uh, to continue to pray over God's land. So please join us on Thursdays at 630. Um, 6 30 in the morning uh, and then we also want to say happy birthday and happy anniversary to all of our November uh, birthdays and anniversaries uh, you share it with Thanksgiving but it's still your special day so we still want to say happy birthday and happy uh, anniversary from Bethel Worship Center and please 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 if you haven't already voted don't forget to vote on Tuesday your vote matters and then also at last but not least contact us we have a multitude of ways Ways that you can contact us and let us know how you're doing. If you need any help, you just need a listening ear, you want to share a praise or prayer request, whatever it is, we are here for you. Just because we're not together in person, we are still together in this, um, this thing that we have going on. And we believe that God is going to continue to pull us through. So please do not hesitate to let us know how we can help you. And that is it for the announcements. And I will pass it over to Minister Tom. Good morning. So it's time for our tithes and offerings. And today I just want to encourage you in Proverbs eleven twenty four it says one gives freely, yet grows all the richer. And another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. And I spent a lot of time thinking about that as to that's that's kind of backwards from how the world sees things. But really what it boils down to is where you put your faith. If you put your faith in your money and the things that you have, you're going to hold on to those things and you're always going to want more because no matter how much you have, you're always going to feel like you don't have enough. And a lot of people who have lots and lots of money, they, they always feel that there's something missing because that's where they put their faith. But those who trust in God and give freely, they just feel fulfilled. There's a, there's a freedom that comes with putting your faith and your trust in God in your giving. So when it comes to tithes and offerings, again, it's about the heart. It's not about the wallet. So I just want to encourage you this morning that even if you haven't been giving of your tithes and offerings, start somewhere. Maybe you don't know how you can see giving 10% right away. S start somewhere because starting to put your trust in God in the area of your finances, again, that's one area that God says you can test him and he is going to bless what he said he would do. So um Keeping in mind right now, we still have uh, several different ways to give. Uh, we've got Cash App, which is cash tag BWCCI. We've got Venmo at BWCCI. You can mail it into 3697 Pepperwood Court, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23703. You can call the office and make an appointment to stop by and drop it off. Or you can go to our website, www.bethel-worship.org, and you can just click on the giving link there. So... I just want to encourage you all today to, to do what God has called you to do. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for everything that you do in our lives. And we say, God, have your way. We ask that you would bless the gift and bless the giver as we give of our tithes and offerings. And we just, we thank you, God, because you are who you say you are, and you will never leave us nor forsake us. We come to you this morning and we just say, have your way in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning. Hallelujah. We would just, first of all, before we get started, we would like to say thank you for uh, joining us on this morning, whether you're joining us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, however you're joining us, we, or even if you're joining us later on, maybe in a year or so on YouTube, we would like to say thank you uh, for joining us and partnering with us. Amen. Amen. We love you and we are glad you guys made it. Um, <clears throat> Before we get started, I want to say uh, a heartfelt thank you to uh, the leadership team and to the uh, people of Bethel Worship Center yes. for just loving on us and mm -hmm. letting us all know the minister, the ministers and everybody, uh, you know, just letting all the ministers know and letting us know that you love us and that you appreciate what God has been doing with Bethel. And we just want to say that we don't take our leadership for you lightly. And so no matter what level we serve on or however the people of Bethel, we love every single person out there. And we are glad that you are allowing us to serve, you know, uh, because we're one body. And so we did want to say we love you. And so thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Um, of and, our heart. Yes, of our of heart. Of our heart. Yes, of our heart. <laughs> uh, and so we want to say we love you. And so, um, yeah, we don't take that lightly. And so we want to talk to you for just a few seconds today or a few minutes today uh, about some of the things that the Lord has been showing us over the last few months or few weeks uh, as we've been going through this whole COVID thing. And there's been several things that have rised up and God has been showing us different things. So we're going to uh, begin to talk to you for just a second about some of the things we've learned. We have been talking about blessing blockers and different things like that. And so we want to talk to you for just a second. So. Uh, we have a scripture that we're going to read, uh, and we're going to uh, begin today's Wait, message. Second. 
So we're going to turn to Second Peter, um, chapter number one. Um, so if you can turn with us to Second Peter, chapter ten, chapter, excuse me, number one. And I am already there because I wanted to make sure that. Um, I, I mention this all the time, but in children's church, we play a sword drill, and um, I am the reigning champion between me and another leader. I won't name her Shonda Bowie, um, but I'm already there. <laughs> so we're going to turn to Second Peter chapter number one. Um, and uh, for those who are on Zoom, if you can wave your hand, if you are already there, and we will get started. Hallelujah. And you see how competitive your co-pastor is. <laughs> All right. Just so, so you know. You want me to read it or you want Yes, it? you can read it. Okay. So Second Peter, chapter number one, verse one. Uh, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given to us, excuse me, exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. 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 Father, we bless you. God, we honor you. God, we lift you up. We magnify your name, God. Yes. God, we say have your way in the rest of the service, God. Yes, Let us speak, Father, for we know that you're uh, a speaking God. And so, God, we want to hear what you have to say. Yes. And so, God, thank you for providing for us. Thank, thank you for you, leading God. us. Thank you for loving us. Yes, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. One of the things I love about God, or should I say we love about God, is that our God is a God of time. Mm -hmm. Well, rather, I should say a God who sits outside of time. But the last few weeks, we've been talking, and people like Minister Tom had uh, talked about some of the blessing breakers and he took away some of our excuses mm -hmm. and and co-pastor talked a little while ago and and she took away some things and that, that that hinder us from receiving all that God would have us to do and minister Joseph and he uh, pastor Joseph he talked about how um you know just uh, some of the things of understanding leadership and and the things that God would have for you and and how those things can 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 bring blessings and uh, and, and so we've been talking about blessing breakers and, and things that block your blessings and things that, that God has ordained for you. And we've been talking about worship and different things like that. And so one of the things I want to, to explain to you is that one of the things that, that can hinder your blessing and hinder God from breaking through in your life is just simply not knowing who he is and how he operates. Not knowing that God is a God who, because he sits outside of time, time sits in him and God is able to do things and God is able to order things after the counsel of his own godliness. Mm -hmm. And God is able to make us promises and make us and give things and do things that, that we don't even understand at times. And some of the things that we have to do is get in line with God and understand where God is and what God is saying and how he's saying it and where God is going whenever he orders our lives and whenever he makes his promises. Faithful are, is God and his promises. And, and when God tells us to do things, one of the things that people like Minister Tom has put out so eloquently is that whenever God has dealt with any man in any way, that we usually meet him with excuses as to why we cannot or why we should not or why we don't or why we won't. And one of the things that we need to understand is that our God is a God who has already mapped out the earth. He's already mapped out time and he knows where we are, exactly where we're going. And if we don't catch that, then we will miss out on a lot of things. We'll miss out on some of the things that God has planned to bless us with. We'll miss out on some of the things that God has planned on doing in our lives. We'll miss out on some of the things. And I heard a speaker yesterday saying that one of the things that trouble him is that when people get to the end of their lives, then oftentimes more so than what they did get to do, they're often troubled by the things that they didn't get to do. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we have to realize is that God has already got our way fixed and he's already mapped some things out for us. And we have to understand that and we have to understand who God is and why God is and where God is in our lives. 
oftentimes when we go through trouble, we get to looking around and we get to trying to figure out things. Well, that happened to us over the last few days and we, we weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we wanted to share a little bit about some of the things that happened. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be vulnerable on some things and I'm going to share some things with you that maybe some of you didn't know. I hope it doesn't change your opinion of me, but you know what? I committed my life to being honest and being open about where I am and about what God is doing in my life and about the struggles I've gone through, because hopefully maybe you will see a breadcrumb that can get you to where you need to be. Or maybe you'll be able to look back and say, hey, pastor, I was there too. So, hey, look, I'm going to go ahead and help you out with this one. Did you want me to yeah, yeah. talk about? Um, so I wanted to bring up something. We had the drive-in worship service um, what a week or so, a week or so ago. And during that drive-in service, um, not during the service, but prior to the service, there was a lot of uh, planning that went into it. And um, it, it was an amazing time. Yes, yeah, so shout out to Sister service. Erica. Yes, er, um, Erica, Minister Tom. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Crystal, she got to sing, y'all. And uh, <laughs> Monica. Um, but during during the drive-in service or, or just before the drive-in service, there was a lot that went on. And um, as we began to analyze and go back over um, what took place, uh, we both began to realize how God was giving us a message for us, but also a message for you all um, on that whole incident. So um, one of the bigger things, I guess, or one of the more, more challenging things that we kept coming up against um, up through the beginning of the service was finding out a way how to get the sound to the people. We had one way to get the sound to the people, but um, we couldn't seem to put together a way to get the sound uh, from just the speaker. We were able to get it through the cars and um, everyone, you know, recognize that they could hear it through the radio and, and everything was great. But we wanted to make sure that there was a lot of volunteers that were outside of the cars that could be able to hear. Um, and for those who did not feel comfortable keeping their windows rolled down, uh, then they could have their windows up where those who were on the outside could still hear what was going on. And so we found ourselves beginning to look around and um, figure out what we can do to make this speaker uh, to make it work. It just was not working. Um, I told Minister Tom, you've got to pray for a miracle at this point because we are here. We don't have, you know, another day to order something on Amazon and get it, you know, the next day. Uh, we don't have, well, I should say Amazon Smile. Let me put that plug out there. <laughs> Amazon Smile. We, you know, we don't have another day. This is it. This is, this is all we have. Um, so we got to, you better pray for you. We all, we all got um, miraculous power and, and everything. So let's, let's make it happen right now. Um, and we were getting close to the time for us to start. And so we had gone up and um, uh, Crystal was very instrumental in helping me go up to the attic, try to find little things that we didn't have um, that mm -hmm. we thought may be helpful. Uh, we're trying to find the plug. Uh, we started joking with Minister Tom about the types of the plugs, ABC, QXR, LMAP, whatever they were. We didn't know. We were just going to look for it. And so we, we um, everybody that was there that was helping try to get that sound to work, we just started looking four things. We found a portable um, sound system that we had been using yeah. for years. Uh, we found that, brought that down, um, and he tried to connect that, and we'll talk about that in a few yeah. minutes. And uh, everything that we were trying, it just was not working. Um, right. Pastor came, and uh, well, he was already there, but he once he heard the Elemental P XMR, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> XLR to the six-inch male is what the connection was that we were looking for. Um, but he went to go to stores. He was driving around the cities trying to find stuff. Um, but to no avail, we could not find anything that could make that speaker work. And the funny thing was, and people were already showing up. Yes. And they were showing up. And, and But let, let me go back a little bit. Well, I'll go back there later. But, but people were already showing up. Mm -hmm. And there was a frustration that began to arise. Mm -hmm. Because how many times did you know that God told you to do something? Mm -hmm. And you're planning and you're trying to do things and you're trying to get everything ready. And you're trying to do this or you're trying to do that. And something comes up whether it's in your spirit or whether it's in your circumstances, and you feel like you don't have what it takes to make this thing work. Listen, I need to tell you that whenever you get ready to do anything for the Lord, 
things will show up and things will happen that will try to hinder you from doing it. We experience it in the food pantry all the time. We experience it in different areas in our lives. Sometimes it's people, sometimes it's stuff. But look, what, let me, I, I didn't plan on talking about this, you know, but one thing that showed up that I didn't, wasn't expecting, that showed up, I'm telling you, with, 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 with fearsome uh, requisites was mosquitoes showed up. Mm. And how many times do you know that whenever you get ready to do something for the Lord, some blood sucking thing always comes up to try to hinder what Come you're trying on. to do. These mosquitoes showed up and they showed up in abundance. Mm -hmm. They showed up with their mosquito mamas, their mosquito grandma, their mosquito cousins. They and they showed up, and I'm telling you, and I'm, I'm itching even right now while <laughs> I'm thinking about it. And they showed up. And, and how many of you know that whenever things show up, the Lord always provides a way yeah. for you to get rid of it? Me and brother Paul, Paul became an exterminator. And how many of you know? And I know you may not understand where I'm going with this, but I'll, I'll explain it to you in a second. But when we showed up, we showed up and we had to fumigate. Sometimes things may show up and you may have to fumigate through prayer mm -hmm. or fumigate through different things to get those pests out of your way. Those things that even if you accomplish what God has called you to accomplish, they will aggravate you all the yeah. way to the point where you won't enjoy what God is doing in your life. Mm -hmm. And so we had to fight through those things. And sometimes you have to fight through the things that come to aggravate you. Mm -hmm. And so we fought through it. And then when we fought through it, how many of you know that one of the things that happened was we fought through it and, and God um, provided a way. Mm -hmm. And I, I need to tell you something because whenever you're going through something that you need to be going, that you need to be doing for God, frustration can arise. But one of the things I want you to understand is that one of the ways that God will deal with you and God will help you get your breakthrough is through other people. That's right. Other people will help you get through what God has called you to do. God sent people like through that day, like Minister Tom, we talked about several of those people who were there to help us get through. And here's the thing that God would do if you discern things correctly and people, God will always put people in your way, in your path to help you accomplish what it is that you are called to accomplish because you may not know everything. And one of the things that we have to do that can hinder our blessings is that we can count out other people and, 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 and not realize that sometimes God allows people to come into your path to help you accomplish some of the things that you need to accomplish. Because I don't know everything, but there's some things that I don't know that Sister Sabrina knows. There's some things that Sister Sabrina don't know that Sister Shonda knows. There's some things that Sister Shonda don't know that Mike knows or that Brother Chris or, 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 or Sister Rochelle or that Sister Monica or somebody else in the church may know how to do that. Sister Yvonne, know that, that Mama Major or Papa, uh, Papa Major may know some of those things that different people may not know. My, my, my wife was looking for a way to set out a stage. And how do you know that we had a provision already there that somebody had gave us from another ministry almost 14 years ago, mm -hmm. and we had never used it. But at the opportune time, we were able to pull that thing out and we're able to lay it down on the floor and begin to get what God has called us to get. What I'm trying to tell you is that you have already everything you need to set in motion anything you want. You may not have to look around you and see where it is, but it's already there. One of the things, too, that I thought about as uh, we were talking and as we were working through all of this uh, drive-in worship service was a lot of times we count ourselves out because of something that we lack or some type of weakness that we have. But just as Pastor was saying, we need each other. We need other people. And so just because I may not be strong in an area or it may not be a strength of mine, then someone else may have that strength. I may be able to call Shababar and say, hey, can you do this? Or I may be able to call someone else. I may be able to say, hey, Monica, can you such and such? Uh, Minister Tom is the straight guru of all sound things. He is the MVP of sound. <laughs> he my is Scott, my Scotty in yes, the room on, yes, on Star Trek. Yes. So um, just because I may not have what it takes to accomplish something, or just because I may feel like I am weak in a certain area, or I may have lack in a certain thing, I don't need to count myself out. One, of course, I go to the Lord, but he has surrounded us with people. That's the importance of having community. That's the importance of having relationship. That's the importance of building um, uh, with other people. And so, although I may not have what it takes to accomplish this thing, then you have what it takes. And so as we work together, we can be stronger. The word tells us how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. So if we're unified on something, the word even tells us, 
because the people were building the Tower of Babel and they were unified, that they, the word said that nothing would be impossible for them. So if you and I come together, I may not be able to do it. You may not be able to do it, but yeah. then we call someone else and we all, the three of us together or the four of us together, or that day, the 10 or 12 of us together can accomplish something that we may not have been able to accomplish by ourselves. And the scripture says one can put a thousand, one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. Yeah. You see, there's a multiplication that comes when you and I come together. Let me give you a couple examples. And so pray for me. But listen, I, I've always had food pantry in my heart. But, you know, I can count the amount of times in the last several years on one hand that I've, I've been able to work in the food pantry for different reasons. But let me tell you what God has done. God has put people together who could pick that vision up and carry that vision. Yeah. Look, when we when the COVID hit and I got ready to shut the food pantry down, Sister Sabrina said, no, we're not going to shut it down, Pastor. And I was like, wait, wait a minute now. And she was like, no, nah, nah, people need to eat. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And I had to yield. And through that yielding, people have gotten fed and everything like that. Why? Because as a leader, one of the problems that we have in leadership is we don't understand that it's not always about us or what we think should happen. Sometimes it's, it seems good to us and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Look, there's some things that I don't understand about a lot of things, but I know there's some things that Brother Lamont understands. There's some things that pe different people in the church understand. And we got to realize that and begin to bring things together. I often have this saying, for those of you who know me, you know that I struggle with some things. PTSD has been one of them. And I always then said this, I said, people sleep peacefully at night because God has given rough men and women the ability to do violence on their behalf. But I also know that those people who have the ability to do violence uh, on, their, on the people who sleep peacefully at night, sometimes they don't sleep. But how many of you know that God has given doctors and, 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 and pastors like, and, and counselors and psychologists to be able to relieve those people to help them get sleep at night? Mm -hmm. You see, because wherever you're struggling, wherever there's a struggle, some, God will allow people and put people in your path to be able to help you get through that thing. So look, if there's an area in your life where you're struggling with, look, there are people in the church that God has placed. And there are people outside of the church who God may have placed. And God will be able to get you to those people. But all you got to do is trust in them. Mm -hmm. And so look, one of the things that we got frustrated in is listen to this. We got frustrated because the sound was, was at first it was going good. But when we look, we had an option and we had a speaker. And I want to talk to you about that. Can I say something real quick okay. before? I'm sorry. I, I thought about something. We, a lot of times we talk about our like weaknesses and what we don't have. But the other side of that is, is you have the ability to add to a situation. Yeah, we yeah. kind of talked about it, but a lot of times we look at what we don't have, but then what do you have to give? You're, you're an addition to things. You, if there's something that is missing, why not be the person that helps to get it started? Why not be the person that does it? Why not be the person that says, you know what, this is what I have to offer and this is what I can offer. So many times, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, but so many times when we started the church, there were so many people that said, well, you all don't have this, so I got to go somewhere else. You don't have that, so I'm going to go somewhere yeah. else. And we were like, maybe God gave you that idea or that um, that desire or, you know, that whatever for you to start it, not for you to go somewhere else that it was, it was already, a, um, you know, in place. We are a church plant. That means that everything that comes, we've got to plant it. We've got to grow it. And so if we don't have yeah. what you have can add to, if someone doesn't have that, you have an ability and you sense that, um, it's something that God has given you to be able to do. You can add to instead of just feeling like, oh, I don't have this, so I can't do anything. You know, there's another side of it. We do have things that we don't have, but God has given us things that you do have that you can go and help and you can go and do. Well, amen. I, I'm glad you stopped me on that one. And so look, but um, and, and, and that is the, the God honest truth, because you can be a trailblazer. There's some things in your life that you can actually start and that you can actually do to help reach the next level and direct potential. But one of the things that happened with, with, with us is that we had a um, we had a sound, we had some a sound issue that that drove me crazy. And oftentimes whenever things happen, I, I kind of take it on myself and I get to downing and doing this and doing that. And one of the things that happened was the sound that we had, we had a speaker that we were going to use. And, and the funny thing was with that speaker is that 
because we did not discern that speaker correctly, mm -hmm. we started trying to figure out a bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. How many times did people not discern you correctly and they counted you out on some things? Mm -hmm. We looked at that speaker and automatically assumed that we had figured out and some of us knew everything that it could do, but we kind of lost sight of it. And we and, and we we discern we didn't discern what that speaker could do. And so whenever we thought that the speaker couldn't do something, we went and got a whole nother thing. Plan B. How many of you know that sometimes your plan B, when we when we can't figure out what God is doing or what God has said about a thing, then we go to a plan B. Let me be clear about this. One of the reasons why we did not uh, know what the speaker could do was because of this. We didn't read the manual. Mm. The manual, huh? The manual. We don't read our manual. So we don't know what is actually inside of it. So... And because we didn't know what was inside of it, we, 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 we assumed that it couldn't do certain things because when you, when you come to our manual, the manual for us is the word and we have to learn how to read the word to get out of it what we need to get out of it so that we'll know what, the, what we're capable of and what the things are capable of. Listen, there is nothing on this world, on this earth that the Bible does not clearly or indirectly address. Mm -hmm. no situation that happens that the Bible does not clearly or indirectly address. And so what wound up happening was because we did not discern that speaker correctly, we want, and I know this may sound strange that we preaching on the, mm -hmm. or teaching on the speaker, but because we didn't discern this speaker correctly, we made another way and we started pulling up another speaker and we pulled out another speaker, which leads me to this. There are some things that God has called you to do and a plan B won't do. Mm -hmm. And listen, and just, because we pulled out that other speaker. See, look, I tell people this all the time. And I was telling Minister Tommy that one day when we was talking about a situation that was going on in both of our lives, somebody may be able to come along and they may be able to take your spot, but they'll never be able to take your place if God didn't give it to them. They may have your same ingredients, but they can't make, bake your cake. Why? Because if it's something that God has ordained and it's something that God has told you to do, a substitute won't do. And so we went and pulled up a substitute speaker and that thing fried trying to do what because it was out of season and it was out of place mm -hmm. and it was out of date mm -hmm. and so we tried to pull that speaker up and we tried to get that speaker to do what it was that it wasn't supposed to do mm -hmm. and because the speaker began to fry we even tried to fix it and it was a good fix it was a nice little MacGyver type fix but how many of you know that it didn't last long mm -hmm. and so we kept searching and we kept trying to figure things out and finally I went on the road mm -hmm. And while he was on the road, um, one of the things that he was sharing with me is that he was getting frustrated. He was going around from city to city, and I mean, not, no city, not to city. city to city, yeah. uh, store to store, looking for all types of things. Um, and we were trying to just figure things out. One of the things that, that I was thinking about was um, a lot of times, like pastors started talking about the manual, and our manual is the Bible. Um, and the importance of constantly staying in the word. So some of us have read the manual for how that speaker may have worked. But many times we may forget, just like in life, we may have read our Bible. Some of us have read it from front cover to back cover. But if we don't stay in it constantly, if we aren't reminded of it, we aren't like going to church, Bible study, doing our own personal time, quiet time, spending time in the word, we may forget we may, uh, it may be out of our mind for the moment. It may be at the bottom of the list because we aren't thinking about it. It may be that we just aren't having the knowledge, but if we could continue to access the manual, then God will constantly direct us back. God will constantly show us the way. And through this, we had the manual. We, uh, a couple of people had read the whole manual and <laughs> knew exactly how the speaker worked. But some of us, like I only knew a few things and it worked for me. I knew how to turn it on. I knew that it had a Bluetooth. I knew that it had a certain cord that you can use a certain way. And that's really all that was needed. So I only used it for what I needed it for at that moment. But when it came time for me to need more of it, I didn't know enough of what its capability was because I hadn't been in my manual to know exactly what capability I had yeah. and what authority I had and what type of life I should live and what promises God had given me and how I could defeat the enemy because I didn't, I only used the scripture to meet the need that I had at one time. And that's all I thought I needed to live off of. 
But when you go to the manual, when you constantly are looking through it, you begin to see what other advantages that you have, what other capabilities, what other things, gifts, and talents that God has placed on the inside of you by continuing to access the manual that you have. And see, and, and, and I knew some of the, the fix that was, was supposed to be on it. But the problem was, and I'm going to be honest with you, when things begin to happen, I began to look at all the people that were starting to show up. And I began to think about my brother, Minister Tom. He was sitting there trying to figure things out. I panicked. And I drove from, from Chesapeake, I mean, from Portsmouth to Suffolk to Chesapeake, back to Portsmouth, trying to find something that was already there. And while he was driving around, we're still trying to make sure what we can do. We're running up and down stairs. Minister Tom is doing what he's doing. Others are doing what they're doing. And at, at, at a certain point, most of you all know, time to start, time to start. So I said, all right, well, we're just going to have to roll down windows, turn speakers up on the, in the cars, and we're just going to run with it. So at 7 o'clock, we get on the... Um, Mike, we start praying. And I said, just give me a second because everybody wasn't in place because the volunteers could not hear what was going on. So I said, if you can turn your speakers on, roll your windows down, and um, we're just going to pray. I said, Pastor will be here before we know it. And um, he'll, you know, hopefully have the connection that's needed. And we'll just continue going on. So we prayed and I said, give us a few seconds while we do this. So after we prayed and got started and we just said, God, we're just going to trust you to make it um, happen however you need to make it happen. We went out, we told everybody, you know, make sure what station they were on and all that. And we told all the volunteers, this is what we're going to do. You're just going to have to listen through your cars. You can either go get in your cars or just, you know, stand outside and listen. And as I was making my way back, I was like, God, where is my honey bunches of oats? He is not here and it's time to start. And I told everybody, I was hoping he would be back by the time we started. As I began to walk up to the podium, to the mic, Minister Tom is kind of leaning over the um, sound system and looking at the uh, speaker, and he realizes at that moment that there was a radio that was on the inside of the uh, speaker that was there. And so I began to pray. He was like, hold on a second. I began to um, pray. Uh, he said, there we go. And the sound went out from the speaker and the cars, and God began to just have his way for us to be able to have the service from the cars and the speaker going forth. And from that point on, then pastor came, we began, um, I think he actually called, and I'll let him tell his side of the story. But just before, I know he's been vulnerable. I haven't been um, able to share how I was feeling during that time. I was starting to get a little upset because I thought we had kind of covered everything that needed to be covered. We had talked, we had met, we had we drew diagrams. I mean, things were just flowing as smoothly as possible um, as it could. Like, I was just like, every time I try to put stuff, da, 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 we talk, we meet, we do that. Okay, you got anything we're missing? Praying? Yeah, God, have your way. And then this time that, I mean, we got there super early to make sure everything was taken care of. Yeah, and I'm just good. like, um, they were killing mosquitoes, huh, chopping them out and everything. And I'm just like, yeah, no mosquitoes. The weather is good. Everything is great. We had uh, the, the screen up for every, I, it was, it was perfect, practically flawless, except that darn uh, sound system, the, the, uh, the speaker would not just work. And um, so I was, I was trying to keep my mind on Jesus. Um, but in me trying to keep my mind on Jesus, I kept getting hit with, well, we got some good news and we got some bad news, some really bad news. Um, so we just, you know, just kept going through. And so during, when you're doing what God is calling you to do, it doesn't mean that things are going to always be great. I don't know who put that lie out there that said, when you get saved, your life was going to be gravy because it is not. There are things, and I think that's why God gives us the word to be able to have the word to stand on and the word to go back to give us hope and the word to give us that hope and future and that expected end that we can look to the hills from what's coming our help. Yes. We can know that God already knows our way of escape. We can know that he's already fixed our way. Mm -hmm. And so all we have to do is even though we get into our emotions, we don't live by our emotions. We live by the word of God. Our emotions are there to help us to deal with situations, but they're not the truth. The truth is the word of God. 
And so for me, um, when, when Minister Tom came and said, I think I got it, and we heard that sound, I was ready to jump. I, if I could fly, if I could fly, I'm sure the whole world could have seen me in the sky because I was going to do that thing. I wanted to run, shout, but I knew I had to kind of hold myself together so we could pray and do what people came to do. But I was ready to shout. So when it was time for worship to start, I was jumping and screaming and thanking God over and over because he had worked it out. He, it was only him. He had to be the one that told Minister Tom, look in there and see if that uh, thing has a radio in it or however he spoke to him. Um, but I just wanted to share what I was kind of dealing with during that time. But see, he had discerned it correctly. And see, whenever somebody, dis whenever you discern something correctly, you'll see what all God put into it. But I don't know if you noticed that while she was talking, you saw the expression on her face, on my face, right? Because that wasn't my testimony. You see, while she was panicking, after her panic was over, I'm still driving around the, 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 the seven cities panicking and trying to figure out how to make happen what God had already called. But what I didn't realize was the moment while I was panicking, God had already provided an answer. While I was worried, while I was still driving around. As a matter of fact, I had drove around at least a good eight to 10 minutes after the thing was fixed, still panicking. And finally, I think I called and somebody whispered to me and they said, yeah, we got it. But, and, and, and so I had to make my way back. How many times, did, how many of you know that sometimes the answer that you need while you're running around trying to figure out what to do, the answer you need is already put in place and is already working and is already waiting for you to get in position Jeez. so that you can receive and be able to experience the blessing that God put in place a long time before you, you had already it. got into it. While we're panicking, while we're trying to figure out a way, God has already provided a way of escape. Look, let me tell you something. He did it for, he did, he did it for several people in the Bible. He did it for the, 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 the tribes of Israel. Look, a long time before Joseph ever took the throne, God had already provided a way. He told Daniel, he says, when you, the angel said, look, when you pray on day one, mm -hmm. I heard you mm -hmm. and I sent an answer. Now, 21 days later, it showed up when you fixed your heart to be able to receive it mm -hmm. and be able to see what it was that I've done. Wow. He told several people in the Bible that. He told Abraham that. Mm -hmm. He told Isaac that. He yeah. told, look, Abraham was on his way to kill his son as a sacrifice. And one of the things that happened with God was this. When he got there, there was already a ram in the bush. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times all we have to do is get in place. Yeah. But we're so busy worrying and trying to figure out and trying to do this with our marriage, with our relationship, that we haven't figured out that God has already provided something for us. And all we have to do is reach out and touch and take hold to what God has for us, and we'll receive what he has. I know y'all like, y'all got out of all of that out of a speaker. <laughs> y'all got all of that out of a talk and out of some things and some, and Minister Tom playing MacGyver. Yes, we did. How many know, because when God is wanting to give a lesson, God will go exceedingly abundant. God will go far out. And look, and so one of the things I need to explain to you is that God is serious about your destiny. Yeah. God is serious about the things that he's called you to do. God is serious. See, nothing catches God by surprise. And so while we're panicking, while we're trying to figure things out, while we're trying to figure out this next bill, while we're trying to figure out this, Minister Tom and, and several other people, Sister Sabrina, different people have given testimonies during tithes and offering times about how they've given and it was given unto them, pressed down, shaken together, running over. You see, whenever you do what God calls you to do, God automatically provides a way because God is going to fund what he, what, what he wants to do. God is going to make sure that what he orders, he can pay for. And so sometimes we don't discern people correctly, don't discern ourselves correctly, don't discern the gifts that we have because we're so busy worrying and doubting. And I know I'm telling you, look, I can go from zero to 100 real quick with worrying. I can go to zero to 100 real quick with frustration. And how many know God would be like, dial that back? And I talk to you all the time about my favorite movie, After the Earth, how sometimes whenever we get to fearing, whenever we get to worrying, whenever we get to doubting, we just got to take a knee. We just got to stop and just look around us and see maybe God has planted a person. Maybe God has planted a thing. Maybe God has planted a way out of nowhere. Maybe God has sent something in the mail. Maybe God has done this, but God is always committed to making sure that you have what you need to get done what you need to get done. But we got to walk in integrity. We got to walk in honor and we got to put our best foot forward and trust that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly 
above all that we can ask or think. But watch this. According to the power that's already working on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. Because God knows where we are and he knows where we're going. So calm your nerves. Whenever there's situations going on, calm your nerves, pray, ask God what's next. Whenever frustration arises, mm -hmm. ask God what's next. I know that one of the things that you mentioned was um, you began to uh, take your focus off of the Lord when you were in the car, taking your focus off the Lord and your focus became you and the frustration and you began to start handling things yourself. I know I've been in that same situation and I know many of you have as well. So it's so important for us to understand that God has already given us everything that we need on the inside of us to carry out anything that he's asking us to do. And we saw that when we were looking in Second Peter um, 1 and 3, where he says that his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and by virtue. So God has already placed inside of you the things that you need. And that, that inside of you, the things that you need may be the wisdom to know to go reach out to someone for help. May be the wisdom to know to go to the word and see what the word has to say about something. So understand and know that God has already given you what's needed on the inside of you. It's just a matter of you learning how to access it. And so I don't know where this message may fall in your life, but listen, if there's an area in your life where you need prayer, maybe it's for your relationship, maybe it's for your marriage, maybe it's for whatever. But if you just stop and just take heed to God's word and honor his word, God will do what he said he would do in your life. Yeah. And so look, I don't know who I'm speaking to. I don't know what's going on. Maybe things have been going off rail lately, mm -hmm. but there is an answer. God is willing to answer you. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what sicknesses, whatever you're, you're, you're experiencing right now, I just need you to focus on God and know that God is waiting. God has already provided a way. God has already provided. And so if there's an area in your life where you need prayer, we have Zoom, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you name it, we have it. And we, all you have to do is just hold on and we will begin to get you the prayer that you need, no matter what it is that you're experiencing. And so we're going to lead you through a prayer of salvation. And so, Pastor, if you want to lead them through a prayer of salvation, if you haven't received Jesus Christ and you want to receive him for the first time, we're going to lead you in a prayer for Christ. And so we just want to say that we love you, mm -hmm. but let's begin to pray, shall we? Yeah, I think that it's important to understand that the way that you can continue to access the manual and know that what God has on the inside of you is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So we're going to pray that prayer. Um, if you can repeat after me, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you. I love you. And I thank you. I thank you. For sending your son Jesus. For sending your son Jesus. To die on the cross for my sins. To die on the cross for my sins. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for healing me. And for washing me clean. And for washing me clean. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. For anything that I've done. For anything that I've done. To hurt your heart. To hurt your heart. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I bless you, God. And I bless you. And I ask that you have your way in my life. I ask that you have your way in my life. And I believe that Jesus is the Christ. I believe that Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the Living God. Son of the Living God. That He died on the cross for my sins. He died on the cross for my sins. And that He rose on the third day. And that He rose on the third day. And that He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And that He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And so Jesus. So Jesus. I ask that you be my God. I ask that you be my God. Be my Lord and my Savior. Be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And just like that, all of heaven is rejoicing. Yes. And if you have said that prayer for the first time, you are saved. You are no longer uh, in this world. You are a child of the living King. And God has, has already provided a way for that. And so we want to hear from you. And if that is your testimony and you've prayed the prayer of salvation, we want you to come to know the Lord and we want to get you close to the Lord. And so listen, I want to tell you, if you don't go to church here, please go to church. And so we love you. We prefer for you to go here. But look, uh, we're here for you. And so look. Um, well, well um, I was praying um, the salvation prayer. I just began to think about people who have prayer requests that or prayer needs or things that are going on in their lives that um, you definitely 
want prayer for. So if you're on Zoom, you can stay on Zoom with us and we'll pray with you. If you're on any other form of social media, um, we'll put the information up for you to contact us. You can call us, you can email us, you can reach out to us on Facebook or on uh, Twitter, on Zoom, uh, um, Instagram, uh, all the grams, all the, uh, what's the other one that somebody else uses? Um, the, all of the different ways you can, you can go on our website, our Facebook page, any which way. Uh, you can also send a letter, yes. any way that you can reach out to us. We would love to hear from you. Um, if, and that's any way, whether you've received salvation or you need prayer or you just want someone to talk to, um, please call us during this time. I know that a lot of us are anxious to get back to um, just having life where we're around people. But uh, anyway, we want to hear from you. We know that there are people who are lonely, um, people who are alone and just need to have communication. So um, we just want to take that time. Amen. 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 And so we want you to, uh, we want to close in prayer, but Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, that the grass withers, the flower fades, but your word stands set up forever in heaven. And so, God, I thank you, God, for the testimonies of people being healed. And I, I thank you, God. And God, we, we speak life over your people. And so, God, I pray, God, that you, that they will be blessed in the city, that they will be blessed in the field. They will be blessed whenever they come and whenever they go. I thank you, God, that you are God who restores. And so, God, even over this next week, Father, I pray, Father, your peace over the earth. And so, God, I thank you, Father, that your word stands set up forever in heaven. And God, I thank you that you knew the times that we would be in. And so, God, whatever you choose to do, God, we believe you for your answer. And so, God, we thank you. We praise you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, we speak life over this next election. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen. Listen, I want you to go in peace and enjoy the favor of the Lord. Amen. And so if, if you want to join us uh, in prayer, just hang on. If you're on Zoom, reach out to us on Facebook and we'll be happy to get you uh, an answer to the prayer that you need. We'll be praying for you uh, as we always do, but we love you. And so go in peace. We love you in Jesus name. Amen. Good afternoon, good afternoon. We still have a few people that are on the line. If you would like prayer, I have made it so that everyone can unmute themselves. Um, so you can unmute yourself and we will, all right, well, that's everybody. <laughs> so we'll talk to you all in a little bit. Love you all and see you on uh, the leadership meeting. Bye.